coronavirus pandemic. The reason you got a fake ID saying that you're 65. For weeks, the big fear has been about the dangerous variants of the virus from the UK and South Africa that are now spreading around the globe. But now, the United States is getting some mutations of its own. This morning, growing concerns about variants of the coronavirus. The New York Times reports doctors have now found seven variants of the virus that originated in the U.S., spotlighting the urgent need for better tracking of cases and mutations. All of these variants had the same exact mutation. Now, that could just be a coincidence, but some researchers are worried that could this mean that the virus is getting smarter and adapting? That's right, people. There are now variants of the coronavirus that were made in the United States, which means these new coronas don't even believe in corona. And what's depressing to realize is that throughout the pandemic, the virus has been getting smarter and smarter, while us humans only seem to be getting less brain good gooder, less brain, less good brained. But let's be honest, this is kind of our fault, people. We as humans let this virus spread so easily that we gave it lots of chances to mutate and evolve. You know, it's like what happened with alternative milks. We let soy milk slide, then almond milk, and then oat milk, and now we're like two months away from the barista asking us if we want fish milk. And yeah, I do want some fish milk, please. So, the pandemic is moving into a new phase, but we're still learning a lot about how so many things went wrong up until now. And it looks like one person that many of us gave a lot of credit to might have been hiding some things. Growing fallout for New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and his administration over withholding COVID death toll numbers in nursing homes. The growing scrutiny comes just weeks after New York Attorney General Letitia James released a report claiming the state had undercounted nursing home deaths by as much as 50%. State health officials acknowledged the death toll was more than 15,000, much higher than originally reported. A top Cuomo aide admitted withholding data for months over concerns the Trump just Justice Department might use the info against them. Those comments sparked immediate backlash among lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. State Republicans going so far as to say he should be impeached. Wow. Really, Governor Cuomo? You lowered your own numbers to make yourself look better? Whew. Guess who just got uninvited to my 29th birthday next week? And the explanation for this, the explanation that they're going with is that they thought the Trump administration would use the high nursing home deaths against them, which, yeah, usually if you're not doing a good job, it gets used against you. That's the whole point of data. This would be like if the Kansas City chief said, come on, you're gonna look at the scoreboard? Isn't it enough that I'm telling you that I won the Super Bowl? Come on! And when you think about it, messing with COVID numbers to make yourself look better is just about the Trumpiest thing that you can do. Which is ironic, since the main reason Cuomo became a pandemic hero is that he was giving informative, coherent press conferences while Trump was trying to inject people with bleach. It's like, if you take a bowl of Chef Boyardee and you put it next to a bowl of worms, the fact that it's next to something so disgusting makes those worms look really delicious. Like, look, man, I don't care what anybody says. For me, you cannot justify doing the wrong thing because you say, oh, Trump might have or might not have or will have what? No, you did the wrong thing. Hey, Batman, did you kill those innocent people? I had to do it. You should have seen what the Joker was gonna do to them. Like, worse than kill them? No further questions. The coronavirus pandemic has been hard on a lot of people in America. Healthcare workers, parents, people with only a hot bottom half of the face, but, there's one community that has faced a unique crisis, the Asian community, and their situation has only been getting worse. A wave of violence against elderly Asian Americans putting communities across the country on edge. The coronavirus's origin in China has caused a backlash against Asian Americans. A 91-year-old man pushed in Oakland's Chinatown, one of three attacks that day. The spike in violence forcing the Alameda County District Attorney to form a special response unit. President Biden last month signing an executive order with new Justice Department guidance on how to specifically report anti-Asian hate incidents. Hollywood stars speaking out, using their fame to raise awareness and donate funds to organizations that fight hate. After seeing this video in Oakland's Chinatown, actor and producers 
Daniel Wu and Daniel Day Kim spoke out and offered a $25,000 reward for an arrest. The way we see it is that it's not one community against another. It's everyone versus racism. All right, this is horrifying and sad to watch. People are attacking Asians in America, even 91-year-olds, just because the coronavirus started in China, which is insane. And you know what? Good for Daniel Wu and Daniel Day Kim for putting up the cash reward for an arrest. But it's sad that they even had to resort to this. I mean, if you know that someone racially attacked a senior citizen, you should snitch on sight. No incentives should be needed. Like, who is out there watching their TV like, I mean, yeah, sure, I saw that dude attack an old Asian man, but what's in it for me? And while a lot of people are talking about the situation now, the truth is, it's not exactly new. In fact, it's been building since the very beginning of the pandemic. The Asian American community has been faced with effectively two pandemics. The first is the COVID-19 pandemic, but the second pandemic, it's a virus of racism that we have faced. Asian Americans Advancing Justice has cited at least 3,000 anti-Asian incidents since last February. In New York City, there was an 867% increase in Asian hate crime victims in 2020 compared to the year before. Advocates say these attacks became more prevalent after former President Trump began routinely using racist language to describe the pandemic. Chinatown was one of the earliest New York City communities to get hit during the coronavirus pandemic, and it was hit hard. Many businesses still struggling to stay open now, nearly a year later. I think it was racism. People said, it's Chinatown, there's bound to be COVID there. And that stigma has sparked some dangerous incidents, some documented on social media. If you're from China, I need to know. Like this hotel manager in Indiana. Because why? because there's a coronavirus going around and anyone from China, I am told, has to be picked up in quarantine for two weeks. Good Lord. An 867% increase in reported hate crimes against Asians in New York City. 867%. This shit is like the GameStop of racism. And it's especially crazy when you consider that everyone was indoors all year. I mean, you know people are true assholes if they'll risk getting corona just to show you how racist they are. But what can we do about this rising violence? Well, here to share a few real ways that you can help fight hate crimes against Asian people in America, we turn to The Daily Show's very own Ronnie Chang. Ronnie, I'm sorry that we're chatting under such sad circumstances, but it is always great to see your face. Yes, thank you, Trevor. It is always great to see my face. But you know what? Now it's not the time to talk about how incredibly handsome I am or how I'm somehow getting better with age because this other issue is more important. Well, I mean, we, we definitely agree on that. So, so how can people help fight these hate crimes? Uh, so there are a few big ways people can help. I mean, number one is if you see a hate crime or harassment or discrimination, report it. Because if authorities don't hear about hate crimes, they won't do anything about it. But if you have a mountain of evidence, it's impossible to ignore what's happening unless you're a Republican in an impeachment trial. Well, I mean, of course, yes, but that's a totally different issue. The question is though, how can I or anyone else report a hate crime? You can use the website below. It's quick and super easy to use. You can report a hate crime in less time than it takes to decide what Netflix show to watch. I mean, did you know they have six different shows about tacos now? I only have room in my life for one taco show, okay? Two, if the taco's also a serial killer. Oh yeah, dude, that taco was super guilty. I don't even know why people are like, well, hashtag free that taco. Come on, man, let's move on. But, but okay, what about people who aren't seeing hate crimes happening in front of them? Is there any way that they can help? Yeah, if you're in an area where these attacks have been happening, volunteer to be a chaperone. Organizations like Compassion in Oakland will connect you with Asian elders to help keep them safe when they're walking around. And it's a win-win situation because elderly Asians have so much knowledge to give. Like, you could learn from them how to negotiate the best price for anything. One conversation and you'll never overpay for shrimp paste again. Trevor, how much are you paying for your shrimp paste right now? Right, right now? Um, I, don't, I don't buy shrimp paste. I don't, what, what is that, to like glue shrimp together? What do you use that for? Okay, well, that's another hate crime I'll have to be reporting. Whoa, no, 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 Ronnie, 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 no, no, no. I, I love shrimp paste. I, I paste all the shrimps. It's too late, Trevor, okay? But if you want to make up for it, you can donate to one of these organizations working hard to support and protect the Asian community. 
I know you've got all the money from all your shrimp pay savings. All right, I'm, well, I'm on it, man. Thank you so much, Ronnie. This has been really informative. So to sum it up, people can help by reporting hate crimes, by chaperoning the vulnerable, and by donating to organizations fighting hate. Yes. Oh, and there's one more way to help. Don't be a f-ing racist asshole who attacks old Asian people. I mean, what the f- is wrong with you? Shoving an old lady isn't gonna make your dick any bigger, okay? Just buy a convertible like everybody else. Okay, I think, I think that's everything. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I, I think we can finally talk about how uh, good-looking I've become. Uh, I'm sorry, Ronnie, but unfortunately, we've just run out of time. Um... Oh, okay, well, uh, that's cool. But, uh, hey, you know what? You can just email me any compliments you have at uh, handsomeronnie at thedailyshow.com. Uh, and keep trying if the inbox is full. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that the people know. But first up, we'll be going to the other websites. Thank you so much, Ronnie. The coronavirus pandemic. It's the reason you keep refreshing vaccine websites like they're selling Coachella tickets. With over a million Americans getting vaccinated every day, everyone is anxiously looking forward to a time when they can get back to doing normal things again. You know, like going out to eat or not thinking about the welfare of the people who deliver their packages. And last night, President Joseph Raisinet Biden gave the country an update on when normal life might happen. President Biden on a trip to the swing state of Wisconsin for a CNN town hall, his first trip as president. He offered a new timeline on when the vaccine will be available for all Americans and a return to something like normal. By the end of July, we'll have over 600 million doses, enough to vaccinate every single American. As my mother would say, with the grace of God and the goodwill of the neighbors, that by next Christmas, I think we'll be in a very different circumstance, God willing, than we are today. Wow. Who would have seen this coming? After all that talk from Trump, it turns out Biden is the one who's gonna have people saying Merry Christmas again. But that's right. Biden is predicting that COVID-19 will be gone from our lives by the end of this year. Just in time for COVID-21 to kick in the high gear. Bing, 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 bing. Wait, no, I don't want COVID-21. And I'm really hopeful that Biden is right. Because if things are normal by Christmas, that means Santa can come down the chimney and put my presents under the tree again. Unlike last year, when he threw them through my living room window. You broke that shit, Santa! One of the bigger tragedies of the coronavirus pandemic has been the school closings that have forced nearly all American students into online classes. And it impacts everyone. Students, teachers, parents, next door neighbors who can hear your Zoom school through the wall while they're trying to record a TV show. And after nearly a year of remote learning, President Biden has made reopening schools one of his top priorities, sort of. President Biden promised to have schools reopened in his first 100 days. I think it's time for schools to reopen safely. But the White House is struggling to explain what they mean by schools being opened. The CDC rolled out its guidelines for reopening schools, much to the frustration of some stressed out parents and students who have been looking for a way back to in-person learning. The CDC guidelines focus on five strategies for in-person learning, including universal mask wearing, physical distancing, hand washing, cleaning, and contact tracing. But the CDC also recommended full in-person learning return only in places where levels of community transmission are low. The problem right now, almost 90% of American children attend schools located in high community spread areas, so-called red zones. Okay, it's good to finally have guidelines for how to open schools during a pandemic, but it's kind of discouraging that the guidelines are try not to have a pandemic in your area. Cause it's like, uh, yeah, that would be nice, but we want to keep going to TGI Friday. So what's your plan B? But what do we expect? Opening schools is so intertwined with a global pandemic that it's bound to be difficult. If anything, it's a lesson to not make campaign promises. Because if schools can't open in his first 100 days, what's Biden gonna do? He's gonna have to wiggle his way out of this. I meant 100 business days. Then schools will be open. Although obviously no one should be inside the schools, but the doors will be unlocked just like I promised. But Joe Biden is right. Safely reopening schools needs to be a priority. And you know that things are bad when even kids are complaining that schools are still closed. 
All across the country, students are facing unprecedented challenges. We're all really struggling. Basically, it sucks. I miss my friends and I feel like I'm missing out on a big part of high school. I really only got to be in person for my freshman year. In the classroom, things are comfortable and easy, but at home, things are very difficult and intense. It's kind of hard to pay attention during class when you have to be like in front of a screen 20, like almost the entire day. I need a break from my mom. <laughs> I just need to go back to school. One second grader wrote this for an assignment on Martin Luther King Day. I have a dream. I want schools to open, but I can't do anything about it. Oh, that is so cute. Oh my God. But it's not the point of the assignment. D minus, read the instructions next time. I actually feel bad for these students. No child should have to spend six hours a day staring at a boring screen. That's what your 20s through your late 60s are for. But it is pretty weird to hear kids say that they want to go back to school. And then again, this pandemic has done that to everybody. Every adult I know now is like, oh my God, I can't wait to be on an airplane again, sitting in that middle seat, squashed between two people's armpits while the flight attendant tells me that they're all out of the good crackers. Oh, I can't wait. And this is about more than just kids feeling cooped up. There's some evidence that their education is suffering and that their mental health definitely is. Kids are stressed out, they're depressed, and not to mention having them on the computer at home is incredibly disruptive for the parents who have to work. I mean, imagine presenting a sales meeting right when your kid's teacher is getting to the end of Charlotte's Web. So as you can see, uh, third quarter projections are really... Wait, she dies? So it's no surprise that many parents are saying schools should just open up no matter what. And when that doesn't happen, they're blaming the teachers. Across the country, anger from parents is boiling over. Figure it out or get off the podium. Much of their anger directed at the teachers union. Our school board has forgot who the primary benefactors and the primary reason for their existence is. And that's the 187,000 students in this county. We can talk about teachers being afraid to go to work. Are grocery workers afraid to go to work? Are doctors and nurses afraid to go to work? Yes, but they go because it's an essential service. There are some teachers who are benefiting from teaching at home, and this may be a reason they don't want to go back. Then there's the teachers that are posting on social media about going out to restaurants in other counties, yet also posting that they don't think schools are safe and don't want to go back. Go to work or quit. It's time to poop or get off the pot. It's such a shame that parents have to fight with teachers over the safety of our schools. You know, it makes you miss the days before the pandemic, when all they fought over was teaching evolution. And to all the parents out there, I know that these are unprecedented and scary times, but please don't forget, teachers are not the enemy, okay? Your children are the enemy. If their dumbasses didn't need to be educated, nobody would be fighting at all. So, if kids are antsy, and parents are angry, why aren't teachers going back to their classrooms? Well, I mean, maybe there are some teachers who just like working from home. For one thing, it's a lot harder for a school shooter to get you over Zoom, and it definitely smells better than being in a class full of eighth graders. But most teachers want schools to reopen as much as anyone else. And they've seen the report saying that it should be done as safely as possible. The problem is, that much like nude beaches, what sounds good in theory doesn't necessarily match the reality. A recent CDC study says there's little evidence for transmission in schools where precautions are met, but some teachers unions say school systems do not have these COVID-19 precautions in place for a safe reopening. We have very old ventilation systems in our building. And as you can see, there is not one fan installed into our building right now. Just because there isn't much contribution to community transmission doesn't mean that there isn't individual risk to the teachers and staff who are working in the schools. I want to go back, but I don't want I want I'm not risking my life, my family's life, the kids, not just us. CDC says states should prioritize teacher vaccinations, but should open schools even if they can't. That's a problem for some teacher groups who have been urging schools to vaccinate educators before sending them back into a classroom. Teachers are being left to run around to try to make their own appointments at pharmacies to get vaccinated, like some sort of bizarre Hunger Games situation. Yeah, teachers are out in these streets fighting for vaccines like it's the Hunger Games. 
And kudos to that guy, by the way, for working in a reading lesson into his interview, you know, because he's like, I feel totally disillusioned with the American dream, much like the titular character in The Great Gatsby. And I'm not gonna lie. All of this has made me a little confused about what America actually believes in when it comes to supporting a teacher. Because right now, it feels like there's mixed messages. Teachers need to carry guns so that they can keep themselves safe in schools. Could we get a vaccine so that we can be safe in the schools? Hell no, suck it up, you cowards. But more importantly, if opening schools is a priority, then America should act like it. And it should give teachers the resources and the protection that they need, not only because it'll get schools open again, but because it's the least you can do for teachers in return for them explaining to your kids how sex works. <laughs> <laughs>